give everybody an overview of what the uh, format's going to be like for today. So, um, first of all, we're going to um, I'm going to introduce each one, each uh, superintendent, and <clears throat> they're going to have about five minutes to kind of give an overview of what's going on in their district, since we have um, the five different areas. And then, following those uh, individual kind of overviews. We've got a couple questions that we're going to be asking um, each one to respond to. They were provided the question ahead of time, so they <laughs> had a chance to kind of think about it and make sure that um, um, you know we get the information we're looking for. And then we also want to make sure that we have questions from the audience as well, because there's probably a lot of things, uh, questions that you have that we can get of. So um, I'm going to hold the video of mine and just uh, introduce each one individually. And then I'm just going to allow you to kind of hear it and then just kind of pass the microphone over to the other person, okay? So um, starting here on my business, <laughs> we have Louise Blankenheim uh, from Keele Area School District. And then also Lisa Klitzler from Two Rivers Public Schools. Marsha Flaherty from Natural Public School District. Clean Tim from Mishka School District of Mishka, my alma mater. I always have to make sure I get that in there. And uh, last, but certainly not least, Deb from Dallas District. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. 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 Topic and one that is very pressing and, and um, forever on my mind and hopefully uh, on yours too. Um, I'm always in Keele Schools. I think that our district is, is a very good district. Really, we cover almost 400,000 square miles in three different counties. We have uh, Manitowoc County, which is where our most of the lies. Um, but we do cover to different county banks like this one. Nice, three, not just one. Um, the majority of our enrollment um, is at the high school. We have uh, about 1,400 students district-wide. This is my going on my fourth year at Keele. And um, when I came there, we had close to, closer to 1,500. So I know we will be talking about some of our enrollments in the county as we go through the we have two elementary schools, one in the town and then one in a uh, charter school in the town of Needy. If anybody knows where that is, it's right off of 42. It's uh, about 15 miles from here, but it is within our, our attendance area. And it's, it's a very unique, um, nice school that we are forever wanting to increase the enrollment because the location is. Um, can be somewhat problematic being quite a distance from town. Um, middle school houses five through eight. The thing that we like to promote in our middle school is we do have a lot of exploratories as with other middle schools that we start in fifth grade. Um, we have five through eight at the middle school. And when I mean exploratories, we're talking about technology education, egg. Uh, music, art, um, a lot of those well-rounded things because we do want to give, in foreign languages, we do want to give students a well-rounded education so that they can get ideas on what they might be interested in in their post-secondary so that they can plan their school year in high school ahead of time. So if they have an interest in the tech ed area, they get, they get introduced to a lot of different um, uh, parts of that curriculum and then they can select more tech ed when they get into high school as their electives. We have some um, aging buildings, uh, and we were very fortunate to pass a referendum last fall. We worked very hard on that referendum uh, during these um, difficult times. We went on basic needs, and we really showed our, our community exactly what, how we were going to spend the money. And we were able to be successful with that part of the referendum. Uh, and now, so we're under construction with our you know, tech ed area, our A area, family consumer education. We're upgrading all those, um, those exploratory areas so that we have state-of-the-art facilities so that um, 
when they get into those areas, they're going to be mimicking as close to uh, possible what the industry has. Uh, so we really want, we do value our relationship with LTC and other post-secondary institutions where we can prepare our students for what's after high school. Um, so that will be an area. Um, we've reduced our budget quite a bit. In the last um, 10 years, I would say it's $1.3 million. The last couple years has been uh, over almost $700,000. Our budget is about $16 million, um, so that's, you know, that's a significant um, drop in over the years. And we've been able to do that um, and with you know, on a collaborative effort and also just trying to be very transparent with the community and how our dollars are being spent is very important for people. Um, we're getting, um, you know, it's getting harder and harder every year. You know, to prioritize. So one thing I'm looking very forward to is. Am I, am I going to <laughs> one other story. I'm, I can I can talk about you forever. Um, we're going to start a strategic planning process with our community and our um, internal. We have an outside facilitator coming in, and we will be setting our priorities and aligning, aligning our budget with those priorities. So I'm sure we're very proud of our achievement scores. We have a focus on student learning, and our challenge right now is really meeting the needs of all of our um, and keeping our class sizes so that our teachers are able to do that. We're very proud of our district, we dedicated staff.
Now our students have to get that information from us. So not only do we have to do things during the school day, we're able to add this programming before and after. And this year, Elliot Clark Middle School also is a recipient of that grant. So we'll have $100,000 for five years. Koenig is in their second session, and they'll have $75,000 that includes some of the things we do, our wine and get them into programming there. What we really want to do is teach them not only the educational benefits of the math and the science, but that human skill of interacting with each other. How do we keep ourselves healthy? What do we do to get, um, get them that goal? And we also have a partnership with elders. Getting them, bringing our parents are able to take classes at no cost so that they're able to um, have that. The only thing is, is there's a danger that this gets cut next year from our budget. Um, right now it's in legislation and it's saying, you know, that maybe next year they won't continue to fund that program, which would be devastating to us and all the other schools that are um, in the economic So it is a great program for us to have. Um, besides that, we're going to just turn it over to Marcia. And then junior high is 7 through 9, and then our high school is 10 through 12. 
The one exception to that is we do have a charter school, our alternative high school, where the students are grades 9 through 12. So that's um, a little bit about our district in, in general. Um, as far as what we're focusing on, um, we're probably calling it the big three. That seems to be the, the three strands that all districts are challenged with right now. One is regarding educator effectiveness, being held to new standards of teacher accountability and performance. So all of our teachers and principals have been, all of our principals are being trained on what the educator effectiveness model looks like. It's a very standards-based program that is linking how well students perform on tests to how successful our teachers and principals in, in their day-to-day -day work. So it's fairly new um, to us in our district and it's certainly something that is something you'll be reading a whole lot more about in the press is regarding educator effectiveness. Um, one of the other strands that is big and taking a lot of our time and energy is um, the Common Core State Standards for English Language Arts and Math. All of our teachers have received a lot of professional development on how do we make sure that all of our students are college and career ready. And so that's very much a, a part of what professional development takes place even during the summer um, in order to make sure that our teachers are teaching state of the art in a new way that's preparing our students for the third strand, which is the ever important accountability piece, making sure that our students are going to be prepared for um, new ways of assessing students in ways that are more authentic than the traditional WPACE format that, that we've all been working with. So that describes a little bit about um, what we're focusing on in, in our district. And I'm going to take well, I too want to thank the Chamber for the opportunity to be here today, and I want to thank all of you for your interest in public education. My experience as superintendent was probably been for 10 years, and now um, year seven and a half as superintendent, that uh, the community partnerships in this area are terrific. In fact, I would submit that the leadership we have in bringing the community and schools together is, is really strong in this area of the state, and in that Buck County in particular. Uh, I did put some materials on your, on your desk, one or on your table. One is a, a packet with some information highlighting Michigan schools, and one is some information regarding what's happening in enrollment trends in this area of the state. And I'll go into that a little bit more when we uh, go into specific questions that Jill has for us. Um, in terms of, of Mishkan, let me just say, first of all, I've, I've worked in um, a large urban, uh, 62,000 student district of 100 schools, and now I've been kind of signing uh, Mishkan, and I've been in suburban schools in between. And I would submit that the the rich experience that we're able to offer in um, Michigan is second to none. And that is in part because of partnerships that we have with post-secondary institutions, that we have with business partners, um, what you can do with distance learning today. There's really nothing that a student in a small school can should get. Michigan cannot get if they set their mind to uh, achieving a goal. So we're very proud of that. Uh, we're proud of a lot of things in, in Michigan. Get a chance to turn to the packet, you will see that we have uh, received some awards, and you've probably read about some of those or, or heard about some of those. Um, we have received the PEP grant, and I think you know one of the challenges that you'll hear from all of us, obviously, is, is financial challenges. And so one of the things that we have done in this is to seek alternative sources of funding. We've received a number of grants for the past few years. We've had many grants, we've had top grants. And now the PAC grant, which was the largest grant in the history of the We're really transforming the health and wellness effort uh, to create good, healthy kids that can focus some learning in Michigan. And we're excited about what we've been able to achieve already through that grant. So last year, you probably saw it. We received the Red Quill Award the ACP. Um, we're very proud of our efforts there. We are using data always to look at the achievement of every student in the district and how we raise that achievement. And as you have probably seen, our ACT scores have gone up steadily in the last few years. And so that's just one measure, but it's a measure that we are proud of, um, that our students can compete for this possible uh, colleges, they can compete for scholarships that they want, and to be sure that they are, they are well prepared for post-secondary opportunities. Uh, recently, our middle school was named as a PBIS School of Merit. In that uh, PBIS efforts, we're trying to promote a strong uh, learning environment for students. Um, Somebody talked about in the past the family unit, 
did a lot of things for students that we don't have today. So we are having to step up our role to teach students about appropriate behavior in school. Um, we had a, a great leadership team uh, in partnership with parents and students and after one year of uh, really hard work, the school was the school in America for that. Can I just have a, a paragraph in there? Just, I think one of the nice things about a small school that I've seen is that we can be very nimble in going after the change that we want to achieve. I'm very proud of the strong partnership that we have with our community. Our students and our parents have bought into raising achievement in Michigan. We're very focused on that. I think we're proud of the growth and the efforts that we have seen happening. Um, and one of the things that I'm really proud of, and I think it, it is uh, Hallmark in Michigan, and it's certainly a framework for our future work, is the strong partnerships that we have with the community. Being on the northern reaches of the, of the county, it might surprise you if you look further in the packet to see all the people who work with us to provide opportunities for our students to not get to job tours, to um, have shadowing opportunities. So students have put together a strong portfolio process. So by the time students graduate, they have had to have certain kinds of experience in the high school career to make sure their their career is held ready. And the feedback that we have had from some of you, the community partners, is that you now take those initial side applications and set them aside if one you want to look a little more closely at because we're helping to give kids the musician experiences so they know what they want to do, they know what they have to do. Themselves, um, I think we're focused on next is the soft skills side of it. So we're focused very hard on uh, <coughs> aptitudes, the interests, and the academic preparation. And now our goal is to bring together community partners to help us uh, create really a good picture that people have on the soft skills. So what is their timeliness, their commitment, their attitude, their ability to get along with up with you now, those are some of the things that you're telling us that people need to have in the show. Uh, again, things that might have been developed in the uh, family and home um, in our day, but we're having to develop that. We're happy to do that. I think that um, one of our biggest fans in Michigan guys is we have not tried to invent any of this with the portfolio and not the soft skills and support by ourselves, but we reach out to all of you in the post secondary world, which is so So I think that the days of the you know, school operating separately from the individual the that they have that the day of separation is not, I think, the really strengthened by going forward from the communication partnership that we do on a way to So thank you to all of our community partners for the very good business with us. And if you're not, you're not work hard, become our partner. <laughs> I'm always with you. that we're able to provide that we said that we didn't have 
did not have the sooner because uh, there is a great need for that support and um, to have additional curriculum materials support that need here again uh, helps with the um, academic and social readiness for our students. Um, another <coughs> area that we are focusing on is response to intervention and this is a requirement through the state but and so with response to intervention, we are providing um, additional supports for students who are um, struggling with one area or another, whether it's long term or short term. And so we're trying to provide more individual or small group um, help with uh, their academic skills. And along with that, we're also doing some probing or testing in which we're um, providing these small tests that would give them us insight in terms of where are our students, how are they learning, and what is the best leverage to help them through their abilities. Um, another item that was mentioned uh, by Mark that I was an educator of that. So that's um, going to be another mandate by the state um, to be implemented next school year, the school year for uh, Highland School, where educators as well as principal, uh, principal as well. And so there are components to this, and it's going to improve student learning as well, even though we're going to be focusing on our staff members. We're looking at goal setting, we're looking at professional um, goal setting to be in the classrooms as well as professional goal setting for the, the staff themselves. And then we're also looking at student assessment and data and data as well. We are becoming much more sophisticated in how we work with data, whether it's um, student uh, data in terms of academics or uh, student information data, such as attendance, uh, as well as staff, uh, staff data. And all of them is going to play a part in how we can um, find ways to improve learning and supports for um, staff and our students. And then um, we're also looking at, um, through that evaluation, we're going to be evaluating our principals and our teachers, and part of that is going to be done uh, through our software competency. And with that, we're going to give us tools that are necessary to be more objective as well as more supportive for our staff. And again, it's all based on student learning and how we leverage, uh, leverage that learning so that the teachers fall and they become more dynamic and successful in the classroom. And um, the other item, I know Chris had talked about the community business
But it is something that um, pushes me to think about building strong partnerships with businesses. We want to have strong schools so that we can recruit people to come to the area and work for your agency that, that you're getting good quality people. We want to make sure that we are strongly preparing people to turn out to be our future leaders of this area, to be your future employees that are going to keep your organization strong. So, um, enrollment is such a huge part of the budget picture for us. In Michigan, we have had the finance enrollment as far as we have been in the district. And so, every single year we have and we will continue in the next two years to look very critically at all the variables that go into um, the budget process in order to keep a comprehensive program. And I'm very proud to say that despite many years of having the mission we have you know, every program offering this who wants to have and again a lot of that comes to resourcefulness and partnership. So we'll continue to look for those for those things. You know an interesting piece I think there are a lot of unknowns yet in the budget. Um, uh, widely known is that Governor Walker opened some things up in terms of collective bargaining as helps the school districts. But I think there are some unknowns that are going to come from that yet that um, that we'll have to work through. For instance, you know, one of the questions I'm here for us to talk about is how many people apply for a job? Well, when you're in a small rural school just off the beaten path, for some of your specialty areas, you can have one, two, three, maybe five people apply for your job. And by the time you set up your interviews, of those five, maybe there are two that are still available. And maybe there are you know, two that want to come to a rural school district. So one of the things that we have started to hear this spring and summer is that um, people fresh out of college are coming in and saying, I don't want that 30 plus salary that you're offering at the beginning of your teachers because there's 18 people in my field for 51 jobs. So I want 20,000 more. And so districts are going to be faced with, do we offer that program the way we've always offered it? And do we pay that salary? Do we partner with another school district or a technical college to be able to provide that service? Or are we going to cut that service? And if we cut that service, what happens to our employment? So in the sense that we would be able to keep our employee costs, if we didn't have collective bargaining, I mean, it also opens up to what many of you have dealt with for years, right? And then you have the individual bargaining with these specialty skills and talents. So, so I think there are some unknowns that we have to work through yet. Um, there are a lot of specialty areas, business education, family consumer education, technical education, your foreign languages. Uh, and while all of those things are important, I would submit to you, so is the first, second, or third grade teacher who teaches you what you So if you have really good people at those levels, and if you don't get kids off to a good start at that level, it costs you a lot more to educate them down the path. So we have to be very careful to prioritize some of our specialty areas over an area where you might have a lot of applicants, but you want that very present So, you know, we'll continue that we have to just analyze the variables, um, the approach it that we want to offer the best service that we can for, for our students. I'm not going to echo everything that Colleen and Deb said, but it's certainly true for Manning class as well. And this is the area that I would like to um, raise up at this point is technology and how important it is for our students to not only have the basics that we had as basics, but also be able to be very astute with technology and know how to use the wonderful technology tools that are available. And of course, as you know, computers, anything that you are purchasing has a pretty healthy price tag and when you need one for every student or access for every student, that ends up being quite a chunk of money. And then in addition to that, it gets outdated. <laughs> you know, so you're constantly trying to work on how do we make sure our students have access to the kinds of technology that they need in order to prepare them for the future that the world that they are going to be working in. So um, this is an area that I really welcome uh, the opportunity to talk with our business partners about what are you seeing in the areas of technology. Are we I want to make sure that we're not so focused on what device is a child or a student able to work um, well with, but the problem solving and the, the kinds of creativity and critical thinking that is so important for just about any career student would, would choose. But making sure that we have, within our budget, we're really trying to be aggressive and figuring out how do we make sure that it's not just the devices that you see, 
we're spending a lot of our money on the infrastructure. All of the, the hidden, you have nothing to show for it except knowing that yes, we now have the infrastructure strong enough to be able to handle all of the technology that's available. So that too is one of the challenges we face in the even third gets hard when they start giving information and, and thinking about that and talking about its rivers because we are so much alike and I think when you look at this in the declining enrollment, some of the things I'm going to go beyond the, the district budget um, and we have a business manager, Mary Kay Slattery, in our district that's wonderful and we're at a very good spot and I think when the budget gets out the biennial budget early enough, it really gives us that opportunity to plan. But what we're really also working on to rivers and, you know, it's with businesses and people and I think things to get out there is how do we help those students beyond that. And I talked a little bit about the CLC. Another one is actually our music program. We know that when we talk about the reading and the math, the foundation of our schools, the sports and the schools and the drama that really helps the child develop is another part. So our kids don't have instruments. So one of the things that we're starting is an instrument because a lot of times there's people that have instruments that are in their closets that they haven't used and they haven't pulled out and to be able to donate those and say a student that wants to play I just I mean we just had a call last week my daughter really wants to play the alto sax but the alto sax is $45 a month you know and when you add that to a child to a family that's struggling that really is a lot of money but if someone has an alto sax or maybe they're going to play trumpet because that's one that's out there so I'm just going to look give that little information out because not only for our district that we would take care of but I'm sure that the other districts would be the same. <laughs> <laughs> Nurture our, our people through this different transition, right? 
now it's, it's a tough environment. It, it, we, we've gone through a lot of change. It's a tougher environment, but there is a lot of hope. And I think we just need to really stress that hope, let things, some things go, and really prioritize our resources because we're not getting any more at the state. We're not getting any more um, from the federal level. We just have to really decide what is our educational system going to look like in this kind of environment? And that's what I really, you know, that we're looking at. As far as um, getting through, we've also had to make a lot of, a lot of cuts. Um, but we have our priorities in the right place with the comprehensive program. What well, we think, think kids need and the development that our teachers need to make schools really change. It's not very optimistic. Is it easy? No. Not very optimistic.
we were able to snag a really high qualified person from the higher level to come back and provide the supervision that the person needed. Now we've been asked by the UPI to provide them experience where we're looking to do the same thing in another area that we did that under the UPI program. So I think that's, you know, what's taken on us all the time. We're very excited about that. 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 We're very excited
I have a question. Well, I have two things. First, I want to thank all the school districts. Um, I'm from St. Clair's and staffing, and I think I've actually been to every single school that's up there, you know, offering my services to the students. Um, you know, simple things like how to present yourself in an interview, um, how to res write a resume, and working with the students, and even some of the, um, I don't know, dislocated, disadvantaged, however you want to put it, um, that group of kids to helping them in all the different communities, so I want to thank them for that. And on a personal note, um, I'm just curious, do any of your schools offer cheerleading? <coughs> Do you offer cheerleading, like you have basketball, football? We have we have it as one of the co-curriculars. Yes. Although most of our most of our girls that have had that interest go to the dance team. Okay. So our dance team is really growing. Okay. Great. Last year, or two years ago, we had a cheerleading squad, and there were two uh, male students on it, which was excellent. Um, but it really is goes year to year on interest. Okay, so Steel offers cheerleading then? You can yes, say yes, you do. We didn't have it schools? last year because we didn't have enough interest. Okay. Now, I think that's probably the biggest thing is the, the interest level. Because okay, um, even, even at palms, right? Right. Even in the middle school and even in summer school, our little ones, mm -hmm. they all do palms. Okay. You know, that's yeah, just, they, they, let, they do the dance. Okay, just needed to know. I just don't know. Because I know, like, Ron Cowley and Luther does, right? They offer cheerleading? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Hi. Um, just wondering, do you have any programs um, for at-risk students? I thought there was a mention of, of like, fledgling students at a separate school, I think you mentioned, or something. I couldn't hear. I think the fam was going on at the time, and I was struggling with that. But any at-risk specific <coughs> programs that you offer? Any of you? We have what's called a greater options <coughs> program. That it, it helps some of our middle school students who are struggling, but it also helps with credit deficient students at the high school. But one of the things that has really helped our students that, that I forgot to mention earlier is our online school. It's called eSchool. And that has helped many kids either progress with additional credits if they want early graduation or if they want a class that they want to prepare themselves for college or those that are credit deficient. So those are the types of things we use. And then we also forward the Manitowoc County um, for our severely um, mentally ill or uh, students that go to that program. I don't know much we have no term of our, our emphasis throughout the district is much more about prevention and early intervention as much as possible. So we really try to have um, students connected with school and with caring adults early on. Um, but then as students continue through the grades, we have more specialized options available, including the alternative high school that is a program for students for a variety of reasons, just decide that the big, you know, expansive program at Lincoln is too large for them. Um, or students that just really thrive on a much smaller, more nurturing kind of environment we do have um, McKinley Academy, which is a high school for students grades 9 through 12. Um, and every every school in our district provides various options through their guidance counselors as well as um, after school programs, before school, and things like that to really make sure kids are connected. And I think that's what prevents that at risk as much as possible. And Deb talked about the response to intervention, which we are all doing. And so what you're doing is the first sign that a student is struggling you are putting into place interventions to help them, whether it's with their behavior, or their attendance, their academics. So I would say it's a lot more individualized than the at-risk kind of program you know, we might traditionally think of. And in Michigan Cat, with our small size, we absolutely start from where you want to be, what are your goals, and then work backward to a plan for them to get there. So it's much more individualized instead of just sort of dumping them into a program and saying, here you go. We're really building a program of steps for each student. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Other than budgetary restraints or um, assistance or resources, as a, a parent of three young children in the Two Rivers um, School District, being an alumni myself, <laughs> um, where would you see or where would you suggest that? 
parents or the community get involved with that the school district could best benefit from? It's a, well, that's a good question, but I think that one of the things, you know, one of the questions I hear that I think goes kind of, kind of with it was, um, what would you change about your district? And I don't think that there would be anything that I would change, or I don't think any of us would ever say, we would change this because one of the reasons that we are in where we are is because we believe in our, in our districts. And I think that when my, my biggest part is that the communication, and even when we put, you know, there's articles in the newspaper, or when you go to businesses, so, you know, you have that information that you share with people and they understand what it's like for schools, is how do we get that bigger and broader? And how do we get our kids in that age, I think that middle school age, where they, they their natural instinct is to a little bit of rebellious and it's not so good to be good, um, to get them to understand that, and I think it's all of us working together collaboratively, and even as parents, I think it's, you know, I think it's that um, I will model it, and you need to follow, and I think as a parent, being a good model for other parents, I think as a community member, being a good model for other community members, because if you, you know, just, you know, if you, you see litter, if you let it lay, people will let it lay, if you pick it up, yeah, other people will tend to pick it up. I think it's being that model and where you are and what you do is probably key. Um, I think that's my suggestion to be. I think that at every school has programming that always includes volunteers. I think that's also also crucial. It could be after school where you're you know helping someone who's struggling. And I think you have you know, that at risk. I think that has such a broad term because there can be kids that have needs, whether it be simple in, in reading, or maybe it's just someone that they need to read to, and even as older, just that they have someone that, that can read. I'm a parent myself of a soon-to-be second grader and sixth grader, so first place we need everybody to be our partners in the classroom to teach them. But I think if you look at you know, the situation that we're talking about in terms of finances, um, being a part of those parent groups, the athletic boosters, those are crucial roles. Our athletic boosters have been phenomenal, and we should have a little bit of addition to our football facility, adding for baseball, softball. All while keeping zero fees, we're probably one of the last school districts that we face this We do not have any fees for students, and we really give credit to our school boosters. Um, the other thing I would say is we've raised student achievement a lot in the last 10 years, and we've done it with very little time. Forums and those who are uh, parents support groups so they know what's what's happening, why it's happening, how it's going to look. They've been our partners in college. So if there are opportunities to engage in the time and forums and discussion and those groups, we see that. Uh, if there are time and the ability to do work with its current leadership and the groups and sports managers, we can see that. And of course, if you look at the work of the child and the teacher. I had a quick question from a, a museum in the community, and it's neat to see that we've got classes from all of your schools that visit the Maritime Museum, but we want that to keep happening. And from your perspective, um, what can we do as a museum to encourage your children to still have the opportunity to come out of the classroom and visit us? Um, what can we do with our curriculum? What can we do with funding? Do you have any suggestions? Well, it's, that's a great question, and I will tell you, you know, as the Common Core uh, comes into the school, um, one of the interesting things might be to invite uh, representative teachers to come and have a, a focus group or discussion with the group so they understand what are those changes that are happening in the classroom and keep the dialogue going so that that continues to be an important resource and support for the That's what I was Just 
some type of experiential learning so that they really can engage themselves in what is going Teachers are really good at doing that. They love doing that. We have had the 4K did that, um, and so did second grade. And that's been very effective for Manitowoc Public School. So, thank you very much. All right, with that, I'm going to leave enough time for our legislators. So, uh, thank you so much.